The scene that my sister Rachel's going to be drawing today is of Fireheart bringing WindClan back into their territory, helping carry Morningflower's kid. I'll read this scene to you now. It's on pages 59 through 62 of Fire and Ice. Tallstar turned to face his visitors and sat down, curling his tail carefully around his paws. I was expecting ShadowClan, he growled. His eyes burned with hostility. Why are you here? We came to find you, Fireheart meowed filling his voice crack with tension. Blue Star and the other clan leaders want you to return home. That land is not safe for my clan anymore, he meowed. There was a haunted look in Tallstar's eye that sent a pang of sorrow through Fireheart. Shadow Clan has driven out Broken Star, he meowed. He's no longer a threat. The warriors behind Tallstar turned and looked at one another. Murmurs of surprise rippled throughout the clan. We must return as soon as possible, Fireheart urged. Shadow Clan and Wind Clan are already starting to hunt in the uplands. We saw a River Clan hunting patrol near the old badger set on our way here. Telstar bristled angrily. But they're poor rabbit hunters, Graystripe added. I think they went home with empty bellies. Telstar and his warriors purred with satisfaction. Their good spirits encouraged Fireheart. He could see how weak they were. This clan would find the journey back to the uplands long and hard. May we travel with you? He suggested respectfully. Telstar's eyes flash. He knew the question was a tactful offer of help. He looked steadily at Fireheart. Yes. And then they all gather together and they get ready to leave, and they've been going for a little while when... Telstar! Yelled Deadfoot. We need to travel more slowly! Fireheart looked over his shoulder and saw some of the cats falling further and further behind. Morningflower was among them, her kit swinging from her mouth. Fireheart bounded over to her. She was panting heavily. Couldn't have been long since her kidding. Let me carry him, Fireheart offered, just until you've caught your breath. Morningflower glanced warily at Fireheart, but her eyes softened as they met his. She put her kit down and Fireheart took it gently and walked next to her so that she didn't lose sight of her precious bundle. Fireheart and Graystripe are just passing through RiverClan territory to get back to their clan after returning WindClan to their hunting grounds. When a RiverClan patrol comes out of nowhere and starts attacking them, very close to the gorge's edge. During the fighting, Graystripe accidentally knocks Leopard Fur's apprentice White Claw over the gorge, ultimately killing him. I'll read you this scene now. It's on pages 84 through 89 of Fire and Ice. Suddenly, a warning yell rumbled in Deadfoot's throat. Fireheart stiffened to taste the air. A river clan patrol! A screech sounded behind them, and the cats spun around to see six river clan warriors charging towards them. Fireheart's fur stood on end with horror. The deep gorge with its raging waters was still dangerously close. Yowling and spitting, the ThunderClan cats leapt into the fray. The mottled RiverClan deputy was wrestling with Deadfoot. The lame warrior was no match for the ferocious RiverClan she-cat. Fireheart prepared to leap to the rescue, but Tigerclaw was ahead of him. The dark warrior dived forward and grasped Leopard Fur's wide shoulders. With a mighty yell, he hauled her off the scrawny wooden clan deputy. And then Sandpaw is fighting someone and she almost rolls off the gorge, but Fireheart's like, no, and he saves her. But I think I'll save reading that scene for Sandstorm's week. So let's cut ahead to the real point of this speed paint, White Claw's death. And the effect it has on Leopard Fur. No! Graystripe was leaning perilously over the side of the gorge, his hind legs straining. Beside him, Fireheart glimpsed a white paw clutching at the edge. Graystripe leaned down with his mouth open trying to get a grip of the paw, but it disappeared out of sight with a terrifying rush. Graystripe cried out after it, his wail echoing along the gorge. No! All the cats stopped fighting at the sound of Graystripe's agonized call. Fireheart froze, panting with shock and exhaustion. The River Clan cats scrambled to the edge of the gorge. Slowly, Fireheart followed them and looked down the side. Far below, through the deafening spray, he saw the head of a river clan warrior sink beneath the foaming water. With a cold feeling of horror, Fireheart recalled the words of the Wind Clan medicine cat. This, this day shall bring an unnecessary death. Leopard Fur lifted her head and yelled into the wind. White Claw! No! Graystrip scrambled backwards until all four paws were on safe ground. His wet fur was bristling, and his eyes were wide with shock. I I tried to grab him, but he lost his footing. I, I didn't mean to. The words tumbled out breathlessly. Fireheart bounded across to his friend, but Graystripe backed blindly away. One by one, the other cats turned away from the edge and looked at Graystripe. The River Clan cat's eyes were narrowed with fury, their shoulders tense. 
Willow Pelt and Whitestorm moved instinctively towards Graystripe, taking up defensive positions on either side of him. Leopard fur growled deep in her throat. It was a warning to her own cats. They were to stay back. The River Clan deputy stared Tigerclaw straight in the eye. This has gone beyond a border fight, she murmured. We shall return to our clan. It has become a matter to settle at another time, in a different way. Tiger Claw defiantly returned Leopard first stare. He showed no fear, but merely gave the smallest of nods. Leopard Fur flicked the tip of her tail and then turned and padded away. The River Clan cats followed her, and the whole patrol disappeared into the bushes. Leopard Fur's menacing words made Fireheart shiver. A sense of foreboding settled in his heart, like a cold shadow, as he realized that this battle might have just started a war. Leopard Fur is very angry at Graystripe after this, and she never truly forgives him for killing her apprentice. So, for today, Rachel decided to draw Princess and her five kits. I know that Princess has that many because she says on page 191 of Fire and Ice that she gave birth to five healthy kits. The names of these kits are only established in the missing kits, and that's more of a work of fan fiction than canon. But since we have nothing else to go off of, we'll have to rely on that for this speed paint. Alright, so the largest kit in this picture is Cloud Kit. Princess's firstborn. She decides to give him to her brother Fireheart so that he can be raised as a warrior of ThunderClan. Right above Cloudkit is one of his two sisters, Nami. She's a brown tabby she-cat with white patches and yellow eyes. So apparently she was adopted by a family of two legs, but eventually grew bored of living the life of a kitty pet. So she left her home and lived the rest of her life as a loner. That's pretty interesting, right? Next to Nami is Taylor. He's a white tom with light gray tabby patches and yellow eyes. He's kind of a mixture between his mom, who's a tabby, and his dad, Oliver, who's white. He's really cute. He was adopted and lived his whole life as a kitty pet. Just below Taylor is another brother, Zach. He's a Siamese cat. I don't know where he gets his markings from, maybe further back in Oliver's line there's some Siamese cats, but Oliver's just white, so I don't know. But he gets adopted and lives his life as a kitty pet. And next to him is the final kit, Livy. She's also a Siamese cat. She goes on to live with another two-legged family, and it's said in the missing kits that she often wonders where her mother took her brother, Cloud Kit, and what ended up happening to him with his life in Thunder Clan. So that's kind of interesting that she kept him in her thoughts as she grew up and stuff. I kind of wonder when Cloudpaw is having all of his weird things where he goes back to the two lake houses and eats food of them if he ever encountered any of his siblings. There's no accounts of it anywhere, but it's possible that he might have. We don't know. So yeah, that's all of the kits. I think this picture is really cute because Princess looks so overwhelmed with so many bays crawling all around her. And Cloud Kit was so big. No wonder she wanted to get rid of him. <laughs> Just kidding. It was really brave of her to have such trust in her brother to give him one of her kits. I really admired that about Princess. The scene that my sister Rachel is going to be drawing today is of Cinderpaw's accident on the Thunderpath. I'll read this scene to you now. It's on pages 174 through 178 of Fire and Ice. Fireheart realized he could still smell Cinderpaw's excited scent in the gorse tunnel. He sniffed the ground around him. Had Cinderpaw left camp even after he warned her about the ShadowClan warriors? Fireheart dashed to the apprentice's den and stuck his head inside. Brackenpaw was alone, sleeping. Where's Cinderpaw? Fireheart mewed. Brackenpaw lifted his head sleepily. Uh, what? Cinderpaw! Where is she? I don't know, answered Brackenpaw, confused. Fireheart withdrew his head and looked around the clearing. Frostfur was pacing outside Blue Star's den, her coat ruffled with agitation. Fireheart wondered what to do. He didn't have time to find Cinderpaw himself. He didn't want to tell the other warriors that she was missing. Great stripe. He thought suddenly, Graystripe could look for her while he went to find Tigerclaw. Fireheart hurried to the warrior's den and slipped inside. Graystripe's nest was empty. A flash of anger shot through Fireheart. Where was his friend when he needed him? As if he couldn't guess. Fireheart snorted crossly. Cinderpaw would have to fend for herself until he found Tigerclaw and told him Bluestar was sick. Fireheart raced back through the gorse tunnel and began the journey to the Thunderpath. As he followed the trail up the side of the ravine into the woods, he was aware that Cinderpaw's scent hung in the air. She must have come this way. Of course! She had gone to meet Tigerclaw herself! The fur on Fireheart's spine prickled with worry and frustration. How could she be so foolish? He skirted snake rocks. Fireheart began to smell Thunderpath and hear the roar of its monsters. Suddenly, a shrill, high-pitched squeal sounded from the edge of the trees. Fireheart felt the blood run cold in his veins. 
It was the same cry that he had heard in his dream. He raced out of the trees and skidded to a halt on the grass border beside the thunder path. He looked desperately up and down the verge and spotted an ash tree, charred by lightning. That must be the place where Dustpod said Tigerclaw wanted to meet Blue Star. But the deputy was still some way in the distance, padding calmly towards the ash. Fireheart broke into a run. The verge was very narrow here, scarcely room for a rabbit, but Fireheart kept going. He called out to Tigerclaw as he ran. Did you hear that cry? But the roar of an approaching monster drowned out his words. Fireheart shuddered as it passed, waiting for the noise to die away so he could call out again to Tigerclaw. Then he noticed something beside the ash, a dark shape on a thin strip of grass. With a sickening jolt, he recognized the small body lying motionless beside the thunderpath. It was Cinderpaw. Fireheart stared in horror. Ahead of him, Tigerclaw had reached the limp body and stood looking down at it, his massive shoulders rigid with shock. Fireheart forced himself nearer. Tentatively, he stretched his head forward and sniffed Cinderpaw's flank. She smelled of Thunderpath. One of her hind legs was twisted and glistening with blood. Fireheart was trembling so much that he could hardly stand, and he saw her side moving. She was still breathing. Speechless with relief, he looked up at Tigerclaw. She's alive, the deputy growled, and then fixed his amber stare on Fireheart. What was she doing here? She came to find you, Fireheart whispered. You meant you sent her here? Fireheart's eyes widened with surprise. Did Tigerclaw think you would be so stupid? I told her to stay in camp, he protested. She came here herself, because I couldn't make her listen to me. He realized with dismay. Tigerclaw snorted. We must get her home. He bent down with his mouth open, reaching for her the small, crumpled body. But Fireheart dipped his head down and picked up the apprentice by her scrub before Tigerclaw could touch her. He began to drag Cinderpaw into the woods as gently as he could her body hanging limply between his front paws. So basically, Cinderpaw ran right into a trap that Tigerclaw had set up to kill Blue Star. Blue Star was too sick with Green Cough to leave the camp, and Fireheart was busy collecting Catman to help fight off the Green Cough, so he wasn't ready to leave right away. So Cinderpaw offers to go in his place, to go and get the message, but Fireheart tells her not to go. But she doesn't listen to him, and gets terribly injured. I suppose the surprise on the Thunderpath could have actually killed a larger cat such as Fireheart, so it's better for Fireheart that he didn't go. But he still feels awful for his apprentice being crippled, and of her not being able to become a warrior. I'd love to hear in the comment section down below how you think things would have turned out differently if Fireheart had been the one to fall upon the trap. Could it have killed him? Or do you think because he was warrior of Tigerclaw that he would have seen it coming and been more cautious? Let me know what you think down below. And the scene my sister Rachel's drawing today is going to be showing Cinderpaw, seconds before her life was changed forever, and any chance of her becoming a warrior or living the life she thought she wanted was crushed by the two-leg monster. I've read the part just before this scene in Firestar's Week, so if you want to hear that, I'll link it down below. But for today, I'll read pages 183 through 184 of Fire and Ice. So this part is just after Tigerclaw and Fireheart bring Cinderpaw's body back to camp after she got hit. Fireheart walked over to Yellowfang's den, relieved to escape the frantic bustle of camp. His heart began to pound as he wondered what state he would find Cinderpaw in. Yellowfang? He called. Hush! Yellowfang sprang from Cinderpaw's bracken nest. She's sleeping at last. She had a hard night. I couldn't give her poppy seeds to ease the pain until she recovered from the shock. But she's going to live? Fireheart's legs felt wobbly with relief. I can't be for sure for a few days. She's hurt inside, and one of her hind legs is badly broken. But it'll mend, won't it? Fireheart pleaded desperately. She'll be training again by New Leaf. Yellowfang shook her head, her yellow eyes sympathetic. Fireheart, whatever happens, Cinderpaw will never be a warrior now. Fireheart's head spun. He was dizzy with lack of sleep, and his devastating news sapped the last of his energy. Cinderpaw had been entrusted to him for her warrior's training. Memories of the naming ceremony pricked like cruel thorns. Cinderpaw's excitement. Frostfur's motherly pride. Does... Does Frostfur know? He meowed, feeling hollow. Yes, she was here until dawn. She's back in the nursery now. There are other kids to tend to. 
I'll ask one of the elders to sit with Cinderpaw. She needs to be kept warm. I can do that. Fireheart padded over to the nest where Cinderpaw was sleeping and looked inside. She squirmed and her blood-smeared sides heaved as though she was fighting a battle in her sleep. Yellowfang gently nudged Fireheart with her nose. You need to get some sleep, she rasped. Leave Cinderpaw to me. Wow, Yellowfang's words sent a shiver down my spine when I read them. Cinderpaw will never be a warrior now. Never. Not a chance. There's no hope. Poor Cinderpaw. She didn't deserve for this to happen to her. She was just trying to be helpful and a good apprentice. It's hard to see Fireheart blame himself for this, because she was his apprentice. I'd love to hear in the comment section down below what you think would have happened to Cinderpaw if she had not fallen into Tiger Claw's trap. The scene that my sister Rachel's going to be drawing today is a princess giving her brother Fireheart her firstborn son to raise in ThunderClan, Cloudkit! I'll read this scene to you now. It's on pages 218 through 222 of Fire and Ice. The bracken rustled and Princess appeared. In her mouth, she carried a tiny white kit. As Fireheart pushed his way out to meet her, she mewed a warm greeting through the bundle of fur in her teeth. The kit was very small. Fireheart guessed it would not be weaned for another moon. Princess cleared away some slush with her paw and gently laid him down on the leaves. Then she sat down and wrapped her thick tail around it. Fireheart was overwhelmed with emotion. This was his own kin, a kitty pet born like he had been. He walked quietly over to Princess, nuzzled a greeting, and then bent down to sniff the kit. It smelled of warmth and milk, strange but somehow familiar. Fireheart gave it a tender lick on the head, and it mewled, opening its pink mouth to reveal tiny white teeth. Princess looked at Fireheart, her eyes shining. I've brought him for you, Fireheart, she meowed softly. I want you to take him back with you to your clan so that he can be your new apprentice. Fireheart stared down at the tiny kit. I, I never expected, he began. He dragged his gaze away and stared wordlessly at his sister. My housefolk will choose where the rest will live, Princess went on. But this is my firstborn, and I want to decide his future. She raised her chin. Make him a hero, please, like you. The unsettling sense of loneliness that had been dragging at Fireheart for so long began to ebb away. He pictured the white kit among the clan as he showed him the ways of the forest and hunted by his side in the thick ferns. At last there would be another cat in ThunderClan who shared Fireheart's kitty pet roots. Princess tilted her head. I know how upset you were about your apprentice. I thought if you had a new apprentice, one who's your kin, you wouldn't feel so lonely. She stretched out her neck and rested her nose against Fireheart's side. I don't understand all of your clan ways, but seeing you and hearing you talk about your life, I know I would be honored if my son was brought up as a clan cat. As the first flare of happiness settled inside of him, Fireheart thought of the rest of the clan, how desperately they needed fighting cats. Cinderpaw would never be a warrior now, and what if Greencoff took more lives than just blue stars? ThunderClan might need this kit. He was suddenly aware of the rain clinging to his fur. The kit needed shelter, and soon. It looked strong, but it was still too small to withstand the cold and wet for long. I'll take him, he meowed. This is a great gift you've given to ThunderClan, and I'll train him to be the finest warrior the clan has ever seen. He dipped his head and scooped up the tiny kit by his scruff. Princess's eyes shone with gratitude and pride. Thank you, Fireheart. Who knows, maybe he'll even become a leader and get nine lives. Fireheart gazed fondly at her trusting, hopeful face. Did his sister really believe that might happen? Then a twinge of doubt pricked him. He was taking this tiny kit back to a camp infected by green cough. What if it didn't even make it to New Leaf? But the cozy scent of the kit under his muzzle soothed him. The kit would survive. It was strong. It shared his blood. Fireheart took a deep breath. He must be quick. The kit was getting cold already. He blinked a farewell at Princess and raced away into the bushes. I'll just read the scene to you now. It's on pages 267 through 269 of Fire and Ice. Where was Broken Star? Fireheart spun around in alarm, scanning the camp. Could he have broken into the nursery? He was about to spring forward into the bramble den when a wretched howl from Yellowfang's den tore the air. Ow! Fireheart tore across to the fern tunnel. He raced into the den, expecting the worst, but saw instead Broken Star lying in a heap on the ground. The old medicine cat stood over him. Broken Star's eyes were closed and bloody. Fireheart saw his sides heave once and stop moving.
He recognized from the deep stillness in the rogue's body that Broken Star was losing a life. Yellow Fang's claws were unsheathed and glistening red. Her face was twisted and her eyes glazed. Suddenly, Broken Star gasped and began to breathe again. Fireheart waited for Yellow Fang to lunge at him with another killing bite, but she hesitated. Broken Star didn't get up. Fireheart ran to his medicine cat's side. Is this his last life? Why don't you finish him off? He murdered his father, banished you from your clan, and tried to kill you. It's not his last life, she rasped. And even if it were, I couldn't kill him. Why not? Star Clan would honor you for it. Fireheart could not believe her words. The name Broken Star had always made the old she cat bristle with rage. This is where Yellowfang spills the beans and tells Fireheart that Broken Star is indeed her son. But I think I'll save that for her week, in case we want a dramatic one about that. So skipping forward, Broken Star began to wail pitifully. I can't see! Fireheart realized with horror that the rogue cat's eyes had been scratched beyond repair. Fireheart cautiously approached him. Broken Star lay still. Fireheart poked him with a forepaw. And Yellowfang's son moaned again. Don't kill me! He whined. Fireheart backed away, feeling a shudder of revulsion at the warrior's fear. Yellowfang took a deep breath. I will see to him. She walked over to her wounded son and grasped him by the scruff of his neck, and dragged him to the nest that Patchbelt had left. And the scene that my sister Rachel's gonna be drawing today is of Yellowfang and Cinderpaw and how Yellowfang takes her in after her accident on the Thunder Path. I'll read this scene to you now. It's on pages 281 through 284 of Fire and Ice. So this scene happens right after Brackenpaw has his warrior cat naming ceremony and gets the name Brackenfur. And so Cinderpaw actually doesn't show up to her brother's naming ceremony. And so Fireheart goes over to the medicine cat den to go and see how she's doing. Hey, Cinderpaw! Fireheart meowed softly into the bracken. The gray cat stirred and pushed herself into a sitting position. Fireheart? Fireheart stepped into the fronds and sat in the small space beside her. He dropped the vole at her paws. Here! He meowed. Yet little thing's not the only one trying to fatten you up. <laughs> Thanks, Cinderpaw meowed. But she left the vole lying beside her paw and didn't even bend down to sniff it. Are you still thinking about the battle? Fireheart asked gently. Cinderpaw shrugged. I'm just a burden, aren't I? She looked up at Fireheart with sad, round eyes. Who's a burden? Yellowfang's growl interrupted them as the old gray medicine cat poked her head into the nest. Are you upsetting my helper? She meowed at Fireheart. I don't know how I would have coped today if it hadn't been for this one. She looked warmly at Cinderpaw, her yellow eyes soft. I even had her mixing herbs this evening. Cinderpaw looked down shyly, and dipped her head to take a bite of the vole. I think I might have to keep her with me a while longer. Yellowfang went on. She's becoming more useful every day. Besides, I'm getting used to her company. Cinderpaw glanced up at the old medicine cat, a teasing glint in her eyes. Only because you're deaf enough to put up with my chattering. Yellowfang pretended to spit crossly at the young cat. And Cinderpaw added to Fireheart. Well... That's what she keeps telling me anyways. Fireheart was surprised to feel a pang of envy at the close bond these two cats had developed. He had always thought of himself as Yellowfang's only real friend in the clan. But now, it looked like she had another. But at least Cinderpaw had somewhere to stay. If she couldn't train to be a warrior, if she couldn't train to be a warrior, she'd feel out of place in the apprentice's den. Then Yellowfang turned and decked her head out of the nest, and Fireheart squeezed out after her. Bye, Cinderpaw, he called. Bye, and thanks for the food. No problem, he meowed, and turned to Yellowfang. Yellowfang led him to the tunnel entrance. I appreciate your coming, she meowed, glancing at Cinderpaw's nest. She was feeling pretty low, I think. She felt bad after the battle, and then the naming ceremony. Fireheart nodded. He understood. So sweet. Yellowfang was really a great mentor to Cinderpaw. 